Hey guys, I want you to look above at our new picture. Um, I was suddenly aware that I had drawn it with the wrong kind of fire. You know, the root word of fire is to shine. And so I had the understanding that instead of the fire on the water, I was supposed to draw the shine. So this is our new picture. Um, I do have another picture in the works that I'm going to show you today, too, so stay tuned for that. Okay, I want you guys to be able to trust me a little bit here that I've gone through all of these definitions, and so I don't have to tediously show you everything, so we can move a little more quickly here, okay? So I want to start by kind of recapping last year. We began by reviewing what we had already learned. There was an internal introspection last year. And that was because a lot of us had a lot of time on our hands. We couldn't go anywhere. And so it was a great time to look and review our spirit, our state of being, what's important to us. Okay. So at, um, after reviewing all of that stuff and learning that we can no longer trust the outside authority. We didn't want to be part of the sickness. We didn't want to be part of the fear, the chaos, the rioting, the anger, the vengeance that was out there. We, we knew that we couldn't put our faith into the authority out there any longer, whether it be the political authority or the educational authority or medicinal authority. And it was a great time for us to begin to seek the true authority, what we could trust um, when it came to important things in our life, okay? So those of us who had the understanding that the true authority would bring us peace rather than the other authority that was trying to rile us up and give us anxiety, um, we, we started to rely more on the internal authority, the new author who was actually in charge of our lives. We didn't let the world judge us any longer, and instead we became our own differ, diverse, unique people going out and seeking alternative methods that are different than the world's methods, okay? Around September 1st, then, I had the distinct intuition that we were kind of entering the fall feast days as outlined in the Hebraic Bible. Um, there are three fall feasts, the first being the Feast of Trumpets, the second being the Day of Atonement, and the third being the Feast of Tabernacles. At that time, what I was seeing was the last trump, um, a last call, a sound call going out throughout the earth, hey, everybody, look around you, look at what's happening, things are changing, it's the last Trump. That was then confirmed by the election, that these would be the days of the last Trump, okay? In the meantime, we were entering this transition period, and the Day of Atonement was approaching. Well, there are those of us who are already in atonement. We are already in tune with the new authority, with the spiritual energies. Rather than relying on the energy that is false and dramatic in the world, we're relying on our spiritual energy. We are in tune with the spirit, which is the goal of the Day of Atonement. Okay, so that, in that, what I now know that we did at that time is we got into our ark, you guys, and that ark is our booth. The Feast of Tabernacles is the Feast of Booths. Our booth is the ark. So we got into our ark. We didn't have to suffer the Day of Atonement because we've already been there, done that. We've already done it, okay? However, the, the rest of the world was entering then into the Day of Atonement, and that is a pathway to the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of pa Tabernacles, you dwell with God. It is the time when God comes to earth and you are dwelling with him in your own tabernacle, in your own tent. That's a euphemism for your own skin. The living God is now dwelling in his temple, his tabernacle, you guys, and it is the human body. So those of us who have that understanding, 
It's simply a different perspective from the people in the world. The people in the world, their God is the authorities out there, the governments and authorities out there, the doctors, the educators, whatever it may be, okay? For us, the authority is in the right place. That's why, that, that's the only difference between us. It's just that they don't know. They don't know where to look, okay? So they're going into their day of atonement. Now, in order to get to the place where you dwell with God, which is heaven, you have to go through hell first. And that's why we're calling this the lake of fire. This is the lake of fire. Luckily, there's a shine coming down on that lake. It, it's a good fire, you guys. It's a good glow, okay? So the rest of the world now will be in their lake of fire, trying to attune themselves to the new energies, the new information, <clears throat> the, the energies of the new heavens and the new earth. That's what they're trying to do in the lake of fire. They will have to let go of everything they've ever believed in and everything they've put their faith in in the physical world. They'll have to let it go. And that's a wrenching. They're going to resist it, and that's a burning, okay? That's the judgment that comes upon them on the Day of Atonement. It is not a judgment from God. It is a judgment of their own making, and it's because they don't have the eyes to see that if they let that go, something else much better and much more true will come in its place. The true author will begin to speak within them. Instead of letting themselves be molded by the outside forces, they will begin to shape themselves anew from inside. And this is where their true light can shine. Okay. We are in tabernacles. Duh. It took me all this time to understand that we are actually in the day, the Feast of Tabernacles. So, something that I learned a long time ago about the Feast of Tabernacles is that God was going to make a skin out of Leviathan for us to dwell in. It sounds ridiculous, but first I want you to take a look at the Leviathan in the concordance. Okay, so here we go. Leviathan sea monster dragon, large aquatic animal. This is um, Jonah's whale. Also, it's related linguistically, okay? God was going to make, oh my gosh, a wreathed animal. Just wait, just stick with me, guys. I didn't know this was under here. A wreathed animal, a serpent, a sea monster. This is the sea serpent. It's the whale, the dragon. Okay, so where did I get the idea that God was going to make a tabernacle out of the skin of Leviathan for us. Well, here we go. This is from an article in an Israeli newspaper where they had the sighting of a whale in the Red Sea. You guys, we are shining lake of fire. A fiery lake is a Red Sea. Okay. The appearance of did an unprecedented Leviathan appearance off Elot in the Red Sea, signal the beginning of the post-Messiah feast, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, meaning Messiah has returned and is now dwelling with us in our tabernacles. Our tabernacles, you guys, are our own skin. It's our own skin. We are Leviathan. And I'll, I'll get there. Stick with me. Sounds ridiculous. So here's the Talmudic tradition. It's the myth. A section of the Talmud describing the post-Messianic role of the Leviathan. It is written that God originally produced a male and female Leviathan. God killed the female, preserving her flesh for the special banquet that be will be given to the righteous on the arrival of Messiah. Feast of Tabernacles is when Messiah comes to dwell in the tent, in your skin, the living temple, the tabernacle with you. Okay? This banquet will be held inside a huge tent made from Leviathan's skin. 
that's what I'm talking about. And I have known of this for years, okay? Sukkot, the sukkah, the tabernacle. Um, Just as I have fulfilled and dwelt in the sukkah, so may I merit the coming year to dwell in the sukkah of the skin of Leviathan. We are, we, Leviathan, you guys, is our fiery flying serpent. It's our dragon. We are the ones wielding that, right, you guys? We hold the staff of Leviathan. We hold the staff of the dragon. We hold the staff of the serpents wrapped around the pole with the wings on top. This is Mercury. This is the caduceus. This is the staff, the needle upon a a thread, the serpent upon a pole. And in the concordance, he dwells at the throne of God, meaning that God is dwelling with him. And... That is what this all means. Okay, so this skin was once buried in the abyss, right? Um, The serpent is our spine. We were once underwater, you guys, not knowing which way to turn. And then suddenly we go through hell, we go through the fire, and we gain our wings. We come up out of the water. And as a dragon, we are one who sees clearly. These dragons that we are, bright or shining angels, the princes and nobles of heaven that appear, sense of burning and shining, surrounding the throne of God is in itself wildly incongruous. Sure it is. No, it ain't. Because this is the throne of God. This is the living temple. This is where the the God resides. So we are the Leviathans. <laughs> okay? You're looking at it. You're looking at one in, in the flesh. Okay? Okay. So we are in the fe- Feast of Tabernacles. Here we go. In our picture, guys... That waterfall above now, right above my finger, it's a waterfall, a deluge, a cataract. It is also a whirlwind, a spinning. We're spinning the yarn. It's So it's a tornado. It's a whirlwind. It's a whirlpool. It's a spinning wheel. It's a spinning wheel in there. And that's where we're spinning our yarns, telling our tales, writing our new stories. I have started a new picture, but I cannot see it clearly yet. I don't have the vision of it completely. I hope you can see it. Okay. It is a picture looking down into the eye. If the rainbow is the iris, we are now looking down upon the bridge looking directly into the eye. That light shaft in the middle, the tornado, is the pupil. This is a spinning eyeball, iris and pupil. And what it is, is a wheel. It's a wheel in the center there, you guys. It's a wheel. Okay, so I went to the word wheel because that is the eyeball. It's the wheel now. And what I got was the word axis, axis. So that center part is the axis of the wheel. And then when I got to axis, what stuck out to me was... Anatomy, a central or principal structure about which something turns or is arranged, the second cervical vertebra, second cervical vertebra. So I'm looking at the spine, and it's at the base of the head here. But what really stuck out to me was anatomy, the second cervical vertebra. Compare the word atlas. 
atlas. So right here we have anatomy, the first cervical vertebra, which supports the head. A sculptural figure of a man used as a column, and a column is a pillar, you guys, a column is a pillar. Sculptural figure of a man. Oh my goodness. We have Atlas the man, the myth, the legend. So will you kindly look at our picture above and you're gonna be amazed because now you're going to see Atlas and I'll tell you how. Do you see, where am I? This part right here is a shoulder blade. This part right here is a shoulder blade. Right in the center is the spine. Do you see that shaft going up? So we are looking at the back of a man and he's bent over like this <clears throat> and we can see his shoulder blades right there and right there and then his spine down the middle. We're looking at the bottom back of his head and he's wearing a halo, a crown, a wreath on his head. <clears throat> what is he bearing as a burden on his shoulders? What is he carrying as a burden on his shoulders? The firmament. He's carrying the firmament on his shoulders. Who is he? He is Atlas. He's Atlas. In mythology, Atlas carries both. Atlas holds up the sky that's what he does in mythology, but you've also seen him holding up the earth on his shoulders. What is the firmament? In Hebrew, firmament means both. God called the firmament heaven. That's a quote from Genesis. But firmament also means earth. Heaven has come to earth. They are one and the same now for us who have the light in their eye. For those who have a single eye, the, the eye is single, therefore the body is full of light. Atlas, he is about to lose his post. He's been the pillar. Guys, he's been the pillar of this world, holding up the earth and the heaven. He is the side post, the lintel, the threshold. He's the pillar. You know that God set the earth on pillars, right? Pillars are people, pillars of the earth, but pillars are principles upon which the earth stands on. Atlas has been holding those for us. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them, which shake the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble. The earth and all its inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Okay? And I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood, fire, and pillars oh, of smoke. That, that's coming, too, because we are dragons. Okay. Guys, what's happening now is that... What used to hold up this world? What used to hold up this world when Atlas is holding the world? The shoulders, the atlases. You know that Atlas at one point gave the job to Hercules and then Hercules tricked him back into taking it. Atlas and Hercules have been the pillars of this earth and and sky. And what they represent is muscle. They are the bodybuilders. They are the physical builders of muscle strength. This world has used arms for power. That is the pillars that we have stood upon. If you don't like it my way, let me shoot you. Let's go to war. Let's fight as brute 
beasts. So what has been holding the earth? Capricorn, the beast. The brute force of the beast. The Capricorn, the strength, the power, the arms, the muscle is how we have gained anything on earth previously. Move over Atlas and Hercules because strength no longer matters in the new earth. What we are moving to, where am I? It's so hard to do this, guys. Over here, way up at the top. Who's going to take over bearing up the heavens and the earth? Aquarius. Aquarius, have you looked up his symbol? Aquarius, the water bearer, he holds the water pitcher on his shoulder. And now what he is using are living waters. It's the living waters. It's the currency. It's the air. It's the wheel of the mind that Aquarius uses to bear up the earth and the heavens. These are the pillars of the new earth. It's the air currency, the strong wind, the spiritual power, the power of the mind, the power of the brain waves, the living waters. This is the new currency. It's the new pillars of earth. It's the new strength. See that shine in the middle of the eye? It's power. It's raw power. And that is what we use. We no longer use shoulders and arms. Animalistic power. Okay. So where are we? This is amazing here. This is amazing. So stick with me. We are going to the feast again. That's after the harvest, okay? We have already been harvested, guys. The others are going into the threshing floor right now. They're going into the wine press right now. Um, they are being divided out, wheat from tares, but we've already been divided out, okay? Because we have these understandings. It's the only difference. It's the only difference. It's a parable, you guys, parable. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. This is so cool. Okay. What does one place mean? I just looked at the word one place. It's not a place. It's a self. It's a self. Autos. It's a self. We're in one union. We are in one body. We are in one accord. We are one with the Father. As Jesus was one. It's one self. That's where we are. And one accord was even more amazing. One accord. A unique Greek word. Use 10 of its 12 New Testament occurrences in the book of Acts. Helps us to... No. Nope. This word, homothumata, one accord, is a compound of two words meaning to rush along in unison. The image is almost musical. A number of notes which are sounded, they're different, but they harmonize in pitch and tone. This is us on the bridge. We are in one accord, in one place, in our ark, in our booth, in our tabernacle, in the skin of Leviathan wielding the power of the shining serpent because this, the shining fiery serpent, because this, you guys, we are looking down in my new picture that's still being developed. We are looking down at the top of Mercury's head. And his crown chakra is lit up. His eye is single. His eye is full of light. His crown chakra is also lit because we're looking down on him. 
This means that all of his energy centers straight down that shaft. All of them are turned on. All of the chakras, the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, all the way down to the sacral. They're all turned on. The whole body is full of light. What does he have around his head? This is going around his head. And in our original picture, this portion would represent the bridge. This portion would represent the waters below. But what he's wearing on his head is a vine. It's a vine. It's a grape vine. It's an olive branch, grape vine. It's a wreath, a crown of victory. He's wearing the wreath. And this is why it, the um, Leviathan said, wreathed animal, wreath. We are all part of the grapevine. What's the grapevine? The grapevine is the red thread. It's the tongue. It's the gossip line, the grapevine. And we're getting the messages like Mercury does from heaven. And we're spreading it with our through the grape vine. All of us are connected with wreaths of grapes around our head. It's the mental, it's the spiritual, it's the enlightenment, it's the knowledge, it's the wisdom. And we're all connected on this grape vine. And that's the wreath, that's the crown on our head, you guys, is we get to know spiritual language the red thread the tongue we get to know the spiritual language hello Pentecost hello Pentecost so what happens in Pentecost suddenly there came a sound from heaven sound it look at the picture above under the symbol for Aquarius it says sound there suddenly came a sound from heaven, and as a rushing mighty wind like a tornado, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And then there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire. This is the language. We just spoke about the cloven tongue the other day. We now have a special tongue. It's not serpent, good and evil any longer. It's dragon. And what it speaks is human language, and spirit language both we're speaking both and i'll prove it to you and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and in jerusalem there were people from every nation under heaven and when they heard the people were confused because every man from every different nation heard the apostles speak in his own language and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born though the men are hearing the Galilean Apostles speak in their native tongue this isn't Italian Japanese Chinese Portuguese French they are speaking the native tongue of the spirit it's a spirit language and the people understand it because we all were born with it. Every last one of us were born with it. That's what we're speaking here. In the idea of one accord, we have the idea of underneath passion, angry heat, anger, forthwith boiling up, Glow, ardor, the wine of passion, inflaming wine. <laughs> Why? Why inflaming wine? Why are the apostles acting as if they're impassioned with this wine? Because we have the grapevine, and we are drinking the new wine. Jesus said, I shall not drink of this vine until the day I drink it new in my Father's kingdom. We are drinking the new wine with Jesus in his Father's kingdom. 
Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And what are these crazy, impassioned apostles doing but right here? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. That's how the world is going to look at us, you guys. Mocking. We're used to it. These men are full of new wine. So what's returning to us, you guys, is a spiritual language. And the Old Testament prophesied of this. Zephaniah 3.9 for then I will turn to the people a pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him in one consent. Consent. One consent. Shoulder back, shoulder blade. Figuratively, the spur of a hill. Look at our picture. The rainbow is a hill. The spur of a hill means at the foot of the hill. The neck between the shoulders. This is Atlas, which is now Aquarius. The burden. We're carrying up the earth and the firmament, the earth and the heavens. I wanted to go back to rushing for you. The sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind to carry a burden to be conveyed or born suggestion of force or speed which is all about mercury to bear up to hold to bring in by announcing to announce to bring forward to produce to lead to conduct under the root word of one accord we have that passion that fire that intoxicating inflamed wine at the very bottom of the root is to rush right here guys to breathe hard to blow this is the spirit rushing smoke because we are dragons it's smoke and what does it do it slays the people that's a parable it's a good thing to die to the ways that they are thinking now they have to be born to think in new ways but first they must die in order to be born again okay so we, we are slaying people with our staff and our sword and our vine and our tongue. Every single time in Revelation that Jesus is holding a sword, it is his tongue. It says it clearly. The sword of his mouth. It's his tongue that we are slaying people with, guys. This is the apocalypse. This is the judgment day for those who have not already been declared innocent. They are innocent. They will now judge themselves, you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome things. I know I'm forgetting things already. Hopefully my picture will be developed for us next time. We'll see. In the meantime, thanks for watching.